Welcome to this digital workshop on VoiceThread. The VoiceThread cloud application can be found at www.voicethread.com. I'm your presenter, Kelly Stair. I'm a teacher, consultant, and writer. And if you're interested in my works, my other publications, online workshops, or contact information, you can find me at www.angrybunnypublishing.com. VoiceThread for Digital Education, my very first ebook, is available at my Smashwords account here. Uh, for more digital workshops available through the Hoosier Writing Project, you can go to HoosierWritingProject.org. If you're ready, let's begin. What is VoiceThread? VoiceThread is a free online tool that is a cloud application. It engages students in multimedia conversations. A VoiceThread is a series of multimedia slides such as images, documents, videos, PowerPoint presentations, or audio. Each slide has a comment feature where the viewer can type, speak, or webcam their comments. Teachers can use VoiceThread to create educational slideshows and guide students to interact with and comment on each slide. Student comments can answer specific teacher-generated questions, solve a problem, or reflect on a process. VoiceThread is a versatile, free online tool that can help teachers engage students in conversations revolving around multimedia pieces. What can you do with a voice thread? Well, as a teacher, you create multimedia slideshows that students can view and comment upon. As you can see, this is one slide of a eight slide slideshow. Okay, um, so this is slide number two. Um, this is an image of a child soldier. These are my doodles. So as my comment plays, my doodles go on there and students are asked to juxtapose the things that make him look like a child and the things that make him look like a soldier. For each slide of your voice thread, you want to assign students a particular task. You assign students tasks by making the first comment on the voice thread. As you can see, my comment, with my picture right here, um, is an audio comment. You can tell by the microphone there. So my audio comment gives students directions on what they are supposed to do when they are viewing this voice thread. Students then comment by using the text feature where they type in their text. They can use the microphone to record their text, or they can use the webcam to record their text. And that is where their answers go. Each of these images is an identity of one of my students who has commented upon this slide. And so the progression will go um, from my comment first, here, 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 here. And it will go through each of the comments um, it will pop up as a text box if they've typed in their text or a microphone for audio or their actual small webcam um, if they've webcammed their comments. For this class, I've uploaded the pictures of my students. I took their pictures with a digital camera and then uploaded them to my computer, which I then uploaded to my VoiceThread page. And so all of their different identities are represented by their pictures. You can have students sign on and upload their own pictures, or VoiceThread offers some generic icons that students can use. Um, when you scroll over the icons, their names will pop up, and so you will be able to tell which student said which comments, and the order in which they said them. At the top, we have the title of the VoiceThread, as well as the progression. So this helps students see which slide that they're on, and how many slides there are total. These arrows down at the bottom will take them through the slides. And so this will take them forward to the next slide. As students are listening or watching or viewing each piece or each slide of the voice thread um, and, li and listening or reading your comments so that they know what tasks to do, they can either listen to the progression of other students' comments, particularly if they're not quite sure what they're looking for or what you're looking for, um, or they can immediately go to the comment button, go to their identity, and make their own comments. If students are done their comments and they're happy with it, they can move on to the next slide. And so students really can differentiate how much scaffolding they need to complete a task. If they know what they're doing, they listen to your directions and they're positive they know, then they can go immediately and comment. If they're not quite sure, they'd like to see a couple of examples they can go through and listen or view some of the examples that other students have done. And in this way, students can differentiate their own learning. According to their website, VoiceThread supports over 50 different formats for media. 
including images, documents, videos, PowerPoint presentations, webcam pictures or webcam videos, and screencasts, as well as many more. You can upload them from your computer. You can find media sources through other voice threads or your voice threads um, through Flickr. And then the New York Public Library has over 700,000 images um, that are free to use. Um, you can use a URL such as YouTube, or you can make your own webcam videos to put directly onto your voice thread. You communicate with students, and students communicate with you by creating an identity and then making a comment. Once you click the comment button, you have options for how you want to comment. You can upload a comment, type your comment, record your comment with the microphone, record your comment with the webcam, or even phone in a comment. Technology is a tool, and it matters how we use it. What can students do using VoiceThread? Students can answer questions. They can ask questions. They can make connections to other texts, to personal things that have gone on in their lives, to other videos. Um, they can offer suggestions, such as in a peer editing, if students upload their documents and they want student feedback. Um, other students can offer suggestions. They can analyze, categorize, or synthesize information from the image, document, or video that is on the slide. They can respond to literature or nonfiction. Students can also, if you set it up correctly, differentiate tasks by their own needs. So let me give you an example. Um, say you're teaching a lesson on metaphors and you want students to um, read a text, read a poem, let's say, and find the metaphors and find um, what attributes are being compared in those metaphors. Um, you might even want them to have some vocabulary to go with metaphors. So if you set it up so that you give the task, you say, read this poem, um, find three examples of metaphors, tell me what is being compared, and um, offer an opinion on whether the author has created an effective metaphor. Now you know that most of your students know what a metaphor is and can identify a metaphor, but there are a few who either don't know or don't remember. And so in your response, in your comment, you can add a link that says, if you forgot what a metaphor is, go to this link and it will give you a little tutorial on metaphors. Um, then you can continue and say, all right, effective metaphors. Um, how can you tell if a metaphor is effective? Now, some students can do that very easily, and some students will be like, well, I don't know what effective means. And so afterwards, you say, if you're having trouble determining whether the author's metaphors are effective, um, here is a tutorial, and you offer a link to that. So students will be able to see your task and figure out what they need in order to complete their task. So you offer it for them. Do you know what a metaphor is? No? Here you go. Do you know how to evaluate whether a metaphor is effective? No? Here you go. Um, do you know the words tenor and vehicle? Um, if you're getting really nitpicky, um, for metaphors, like, here you go. Here's the information. And so students can determine what they need based on the task and based on what they already know. And so they have as much support as they need, but they don't need to take it if they don't need it. In addition, students can also determine the intensity and duration of their engagement in the learning task. If you have students who already know all of that stuff, they are so above and beyond. They know tenor, they know vehicle, um, they're comparing metaphors left and right, they have no issues with it, then they can answer the question and move on. They don't have to be bored going through tutorials of things they already know. On the other hand, if they don't know, and who doesn't want to know things? If they don't know something, there's the information they can go find out and then they can immediately apply it right to the task. Then you've got your social learners who in addition to completing their own tasks want to know what everybody else has said. And so they can spend their time as much as they want going through and listening or reading other people's comments. You also have kids that have really tight schedules. You've got athletes who are on buses late at night, you've got um, kids in plays, kids in choir, kids in all kinds of extracurricular activities, kids with after school jobs. This lets them determine how long they need to spend on this task. They don't need to spend half an hour on it if they can get it done in five minutes. Um, and so it lets them determine how long and how intensely they work on those tasks. 
the more we can empower students to evaluate their own learning, to determine what they need, how much they need, and when works best for them, the more buy-in you will get from your students. Here's some of the benefits of VoiceThread. First, it engages visual and kinesthetic students with multimedia pieces. You don't have to have just reading pieces. Um, you have videos, you have images, um, you have demonstrations, you have all kinds of pieces that will engage different learning styles. It also allows students to respond with text, talk, or video. So if you have kids that are too shy to speak up, they can text in their answers. If you have kids that refuse to write, they just hate to write, they can still do every task you assign and they can just talk right into the microphone. When you give students choices in how to respond, you will get more responses. VoiceThread also creates a social incentive and an authentic audience. I've seen kids go through webcams of their comments and do them over and over and over again because they know that number one, other people are going to watch them, and number two, other people are going to make comments on their videos. And so they will go through and make sure they know exactly what they want to say. Some of them will take notes. Um, they'll do it over and over and over. They'll watch it, um, evaluate it. It's a nice side effect that it increases how much kids want to do well. And it really, really enhances the habits of being precise and communicating with clarity. Another benefit of VoiceThread is that it helps develop interpersonal skills as well as students' netiquette in their behavior online. VoiceThread can host galleries of student work, whether it's images, um, digital photographs, or documents that students have worked on. VoiceThread also scaffolds difficult tasks with multimedia resources and outside connections. It can differentiate learning, practice, and review tasks to meet students where they are. So here are three ways in the following videos how to use VoiceThread for activating background knowledge, asynchronous discussions, and mini-lessons with practice or review.